Welcome back to P2. Today we're looking at midpoints and perpendicular bisectors. So first, if we're thinking of a midpoint, we're thinking of the midpoint between two coordinates or a line segment. Now, if you're not sure what a line segment is, it is simply just part of a line. So this would be a line segment, just a section of line. And if I think of two coordinates, let's call them A and B. So this is my line segment AB. It's just a line between A and B. And if I think of my coordinates, so we'll call them x1 and y1 for the a, x2 and y2 for the b. And if I want to find the middle of this line or the midpoint, what I'm doing is I'm thinking, right, I want halfway between the two x's and halfway between the two y's. And to do that, I'm just looking at the average value of x, the mean value, or the average or the mean value of y. So this midpoint, which I'm going to call m, is very simply adding my two x values up and divide by two, and then adding my two y values up and divide by two. And all that is, it just gives me, if I think of my two x values, add these two values up, divide by two will always give me the middle value. And do the same with the y to give me the middle value of y. And that is how I find the midpoint of a line or the midpoint between two coordinates. Now, a perpendicular bisector, well, perpendicular means when something is at 90 degrees. So perpendicular is 90 degrees. Bisector means to cut into two sections. Bi is your two. And in maths, when we talk about a bisector, it's to cut into two equal sections. So if I was looking at the perpendicular bisector of AB, it would be this line here in red that I've just drawn. And it would go through the middle of AB and it would be at 90 degrees to AB. So this is my perpendicular bisector. Now, you learned about perpendicular lines back in P1. It was in the straight line graphs unit, which is unit five. And if you remember there, when you found the gradient, so the gradient of a line would be the difference in Y values divided by the difference in x values. And then the gradient of the perpendicular line would be one over that gradient and change your sign. So straightforward example here, just wanna find the midpoint of a B. So this midpoint, I'm going to just call M for midpoint. It is my two X's added together, divided by two, and my two Y's added together, divided by two. So I've got three plus eight is 11, divided by two is 5.5. .5. I'm going to leave it as a fraction, 11 over two. And then my y is 2 plus 6, which is 8, divided by 2, which is 4. And that is the midpoint of AB. So here we have a line segment AB, which is the diameter of a circle. And so I get something like this, just to show you visually. Now, I want to find the coordinates of the centre of the circle. Okay. So if I call this M, M is going to be adding my two X values together, minus three plus six, and then dividing by two, and my Y's, minus four plus 10, divided by two. So that gives me three over two and three. So my midpoint 
is 1.53 or 3 over 2 and 3. Now, for the second part of the question, it wants me to show that the centre lies on the line y equals 2x. So if I think about the line y equals 2x, if I look to substitute in x equals 3 over 2, then I get 2 times 3 over 2, which is going to be 3. Now that clearly shows that the midpoint appears on that line. Now, for this one, we need to find the perpendicular bisector of the line segment AB, where A and B are 1.5, oh, sorry, 1,5 and minus 2,8. So here's a rough sketch of what we're looking at, something along these lines. Now, we want the perpendicular bisector, so that's going to happen at the midpoint and then we're essentially looking at this line okay i might not have got it perfectly in the middle there but that is what we're looking at going through the midpoint so there's two things i need to know i need to know what m is the middle of a b and i need to know what the gradient of the red line is and to get that i'll need the gradient of the black line the original so let's start by getting the midpoint as that's probably the easiest place to start it says add my x values divide by 2 add my y values divide by 2 that gives me minus a half and six and a half there or 13 over 2. now let's find the gradient of a b now gradient is the difference in y's doesn't matter which way i'm going to start i'm going to start with the b so that's going to be eight take away five so i'm doing b take away a starting with the b with the x's minus two minus one so eight take away five is three minus two minus one is minus three so my gradient of AB is negative 1. That therefore means that the gradient of my perpendicular line is going to be 1 divided by this minus 1 and then change my signs. So it's actually going to be positive 1. Okay, just remember that this is 1 over M and change your sign. Now I know the midpoint and I know the gradient, I can use the formula from P1. So Y minus Y1 equals M X minus X1. So Y minus 13 over 2 equals 1 lots of X minus minus a half. So that's going to give me y minus 13 over 2 equals x plus a half. Now, those of you who've watched my videos before will know that when we're dealing with fractions, this is when I like to put it in the form of ax plus by plus c equals 0. As that's often the preferred form when you're dealing with fractions. So I'm going to multiply through by 2. So 2y minus 13 equals 2x plus 1. So multiply each term there by 2. Now I want to get them on the side where x is positive. So we get 2x minus 2y. And then I'm adding the 13, so that gives me plus 14. However, now having looked at this, I can quite clearly see that I've got all even numbers. So actually, the multiplying by 2 was almost a silly thing to do in this case because of the halves were going to sort themselves out. So actually, I'm going to take a couple of steps back here and 
I'm actually just going to keep it in the form of y equals mx plus c. Because actually if I add 13 and a half, sorry, 13 over 2 to 1 half, it's going to give me 14 over 2, which is 7. So y equals x plus 7. So that's far simpler. Okay, so it's not always, you know, you know, even with myself, I can sometimes not spot things instantly. But, you know, you should be able to adjust your thing, thinking as you go through a question. I'm going to give you a few to try yourself. And as always, I will go through the answers at the end of the video. Now, with this one, we've got two coordinates, 6, 6, 8, and P. What we know is that the perpendicular bisector of AB has this equation, so we have this gradient. So if the gradient of the perpendicular bisector is 2, the gradient of the line A B is going to be minus a half. So difference in y's is going to be P minus 6 over difference in x's, 8 minus 6, and that's going to be equal to minus a half. So P minus 6 over 2 equals minus half. Multiply by 2, so P minus 6 equals minus 1. Add my 6, so P equals 5. So that's my first point done there. So I now know the coordinates of B is 8, 5. Now that should make it quite straightforward now to be able to find C. Um, all we need to do is find the midpoint of A and B. And once we've found the midpoint, we just substitute it into the y equals 2x plus c. So this midpoint now is add my x's divided by 2, add my y's divided by 2. So 6 plus 8 is 14 over 2 is 7. And then we've got 11 over 2, which I'll leave as a fraction. So substituting this in, y equals 2x plus c. So y is 11 over 2 when x is 7. So we get 11 over 2 equals 14 plus c. So c is going to be 11 over 2 minus 14, which is minus 17 over 2. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Okay. Often in questions, I should point out that when I ask you to find values, it's often easier to find them in the order in which they are written. Hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, 
hit me up in the comment section, uh, especially if you may see any mistakes, because, you know, I do make some mistakes, especially since I've been unwell lately. So just, uh, if you do spot anything, let me know in the comments. And if you want any extra help, let me know in the comments.